So the road uh, is ahead of us, so to say. We don't really know where the road is leading in the next weeks, maybe in days. And uh, maybe some economies might default. We don't really know what's happening. And that's basically the scene of our opening battery this morning. Uh, to look into the next uh, six to 12 months, the economic outlook, and a little bit of an um, impression on what might be happening. Of course, this session is also about China, and to see what role China will play in the future. Many people, ladies and gentlemen, are asking China to pay out the good old West, Europe, and American, uh, and US, and uh, to see if China might be the lender of last resort, paying out the rest of the world. So we see uh, certainly a differentiation between the OECD countries on the one hand, sluggish growth, not much growth initiatives, and we see the so-called BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, and maybe even more to Africa, uh, the emerging countries, emerging economies, being strong and uh, being the new engines of globalization. I'm very glad, ladies and gentlemen, uh, here this morning on this um, eminent panel, and I would like to introduce you, the panelists, uh, just in a few words. To my right, uh, to your left, uh, is uh, Kola Karim, who is joining us from uh, Nigeria, from Africa, one of the growth markets I mentioned before. Kola is the CEO of Shoreline Energy International based in Nigeria. Uh, to his left, from uh, your side, is um, Mr. Zhou Tianping, the chairman of um, China Inland Group, uh, based in China. Uh, China Inland Group is a very interesting company. It's one of those export-oriented Chinese companies. And to start off, Mr. Zhou clothing um, and um, to buying the West with your products. But you also many other industries right now, like uh, the Chinese conglomerate, uh, redefining growth um, uh, in this world. Uh, to your uh, left, uh, Mr. Chu, Chu and I, Ben Chu, the CEO of um, CICC, the China International Capital Corporation, uh, a bank in China, not only a bank, but a sea bank, I can say, it's the largest um, investment bank, brokering deals between China and the West, of course, also domestically, and you are behind of, uh, some of those strategic moves of Chinese companies now conquering the world. To my left, um, is Mr. Ron Chen Yin, the Secretary General of the China Federation of Industrial Economics, our co-host from China of this meeting. And uh, Mr. Ron is also an economist, uh, and I learned also you are an artist, which is an interesting uh, combination. And you see that um, Chinese um, entrepreneurs, um, now they uh, have many um, uh, different backgrounds coming from different uh, corners, not only domestically, it's in, uh, in China itself, it's not only Beijing, Shanghai, and many different regions, and the entrepreneurs have uh, multiple backgrounds. Representing Europe on this panel is Juris uh, Gulbis, the CEO of uh, Lux Telecom, based in Riga, the capital of uh, Latvia. And Latvia actually experienced uh, quite a downturn a few years ago, since when the economic crisis started in 2007-2008. Latvia was one of those countries hit first, but I think you made your homework uh, in Latvia, your very well placed now. And, uh, uh, to see, you know, the second wave of crisis, um, what the country can do. Maybe let me start off the session, ladies and gentlemen, by asking um, Mr. Chu and I, let me show about his view on Europe and on China, and to see um, how China will be handicapped uh, by this uh, sluggish developments here in Europe. And maybe let me ask you, Evan, uh, what is your view on, on Europe? Do you think Europe will still be there, um, how it has been for the last uh, 50 years, or will it be uh, really making you know, a new emerging country because we lost our competitiveness. And China, of course, might, uh, as I mentioned before, came out here. 